of the 20th century, African Americans in major cities lived scattered throughout the city. They weren't segregated particularly. It's only with the great migration of six to seven million African Americans north and west escaping the south. The predominant response of the United States government and state and local governments to the great migration was to contain black people in their own neighborhoods. And HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, was particularly a part of this role. But the precursors to HUD introduced and encouraged racially restrictive covenants, redlining of every major city where African Americans landed. The federal government was a sponsor of urban renewal, infamously called Negro removal by the great James Baldwin. Urban renewal, which means moving the Negroes out. It means Negro removal. That is what it means. And the federal government is, a, is, is an accomplice to this fact. That so-called urban renewal also included a federally sponsored interstate highway system, which was intentionally designed to mow through vibrant black neighborhoods. Take Miami, for example. Two highways, I-95 and I-395, bulldoze right through the predominantly black and low-income Overtown neighborhood, previously called Colored Town during segregation. The Department of Housing and Urban Development and the federal government writ large in the first seven decades of the 20th century invested billions of dollars in racial segregation and concentrated poverty. Each time this country created a peculiar institution that subordinated Black people, slavery, Jim Crow, it created and dismantled it. They replaced it with another one. And the iconic Black ghetto, I don't use that as a purgative, I use it as a descriptor, was a follow-on institution to slavery and Jim Crow. That's the legacy that every new administration inherits, and the Biden administration has as well. Today... I'm directing the Department of Housing and Urban Affairs and Urban Development to redress historical racism in federal housing policies. This executive order is just one of four signed by President Biden designed to address racial equity in the United States. And while this progress is a step in the right direction, there's still a lot of harm to undo. Segregation started coming down after the passage of the Fair Housing Act of 1968, which actually only got passed in the wake of Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination. In 1980, eight out of 10 black people would have had to move in order to be evenly integrated within metropolitan areas. Half of black people who live in metropolitan areas still live in neighborhoods of high segregation. So we've had modest improvement, but segregation persists. And economic segregation has spiked since 1970. The so-called American dream is only working for a relatively small slice of the population that can afford to buy their way into what I call gold standard neighborhoods that have the best of everything. And everybody else struggles and the black poor struggle the most. So what happens now? Well, some advocates are hopeful. Home applauds this executive order for really focusing on historical patterns of racial segregation and discrimination in housing. While others remain cautiously optimistic. Here's Professor Cashin's suggestion. I don't take credit for this, but I applaud it. There should be an equity analysis. The federal government spends so much money, it should track who's getting it by neighborhood. And it should pursue racial equity in the distribution of resources. There's been a lot of movement at the local level on this. I'll give an example of Baltimore. They did an equity analysis and found that they were spending four times as much money in majority white neighborhoods as the majority black ones. I think we're in this moment where people are waking up, sad to say, because of the slow execution of George Floyd, to the realities of systemic racism. And I believe there is an ascending majority multiracial coalition that wants something better than a separate unequal nation that overinvests in some neighborhoods and disinvests and preys upon people in other neighborhoods. I'm hopeful, but you can never stop working for and organizing for the country you want.
Yahweh Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chaha, Wadash. I want to give double honors to the head apostle, and others a great millstone who rule well and teach well. Peace and blessing to you, sincerely. I am better pushing this truth all over the four corners of the earth, week in and week out, in our truth and sincerity. Let's jump to Micah 2 and 10 to start this out. It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. You know, and the majority of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are seeking some type of rest, especially over here in Babylon, man. Okay? And they have this hope that one day things will be okay, things will be all right. That finally that the so-called white man will accept them as their friend. And they will finally be able to see eye to eye with this devil. Which that's never going to happen on this side, man. Okay? The only time you're going to receive any type of rest, any type of comfort, the only time you're going to really truly be able to enjoy life and, and, and completely be able to, to live life to its fullest is in the kingdom, all right? Not on this side, man, all right? Our people fail to realize that this devil is in rulership. And like the scripture says, let's go to John chapter 10 real quick. Uh, let's go down to verse 10. It says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that's what this devil has done, man. And this and the so-called white man, mainly concerning these wicked elites, is they they're the ultimate thieves, thieves on the earth, man. All right. The so-called white man is the ultimate thief. He's stolen this land from the, the so-called Native Americans. You know, he's everything he's got. And established in America, as well as various other parts of the earth, are off the backs of you Israelites, man. Okay? Let's read that again. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And this is what this devil's agendas and strategies and goals, all right, circle around. Destroying you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and, and, and also along the way to putting you uh, in the grave, so to speak, is to have you uh, uh, highly confused, not, know who, not knowing who you are, not knowing who your power is, not knowing who's in control and who's in rulership, and, have, and giving you a, a, a false sense that, or a false hope that you can make it in this place and you can be somebody. And that the things that happened in the past Y'all came through that and y'all have reached to the, 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 the level of being able to have a job, being able to coexist with the so-called white man, being able to ultimately get a, a nice uh, 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 position in society. Esau has set up these different particular leaders of Israel, uh, uh, you know, in these these high, highly influential positions to give you or to solidify that false hope amongst the majority of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, that you can make it in this life. That you could be a rapper, you could be an entertainer, okay? You could you could make it in the in the business world. You could be this, you could be that. You could be the first black, okay, person to achieve this type of goal. Hey, you could be the president of the United States of America, man, right? But it's all facade. It's all bullshit, man. This man has a perpetual hatred for you, okay? It says, the thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Okay. Now let's go over to um, <clears throat> Ezekiel, the 35th chapter real quick. And let's start from the top. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Okay. And, and that's what we're doing, man. All right, the men that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai set up all over the four corners of the earth, we're prophesying against this place. We're prophesying against the so-called white man, all right, and his kingdom. And the majority of our people, they're against that, all right? They're against us speaking out against America because they love America. And moreover, they love the so-called white man. Our people don't like when we go into history. Our people don't want to hear about history. They don't want to hear about what the so-called blacks 
have went through in America, man, at the hands of this devil. They don't want to hear about it, man. They want to they, they want to cover their ears. They don't want their children to hear about it. OK. Hey, but this is history, man. Not only is this history of for you Israelites, but this is history of uh, these Edomites of what as well, man. And the things that are going on today and the things that have happened in the past, this is a, a systematic. All right thing that uh has been put in place by these wicked elites and let's get that definition real quick for systematic uh this is systematic it says done or acting according to a fixed plan or system methodical all right and this is a a, a fixed plan that has been put in place years and years ago you know by these uh wicked elites and their secret councils all right the things that have happened concerning you know the hardcore slavery of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, for, to you being, uh, uh, you know, uh, that slavery being alleviated to some standpoint, all right, for you to be uh, uh, integrated amongst the so-called white man, you know, for uh, into slavery being abolished, you know, or vice versa. And, uh, you know, and ultimately, you know, the harsh treatment of you, 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 you so-called blacks after uh, slavery was abolished. OK, you know, and coming into the times that, you know, we are in now. All right. Which the things that this devil was doing in the past, he's still doing it. He's just doing it in a different way, in a different format that the majority of our people, they fail to realize and they fail to see. OK. It says uh, structured. It says well ordered, planned. This is this is a well planned and orchestrated uh, ta tactics and methods that the so-called white man has uh, put amongst you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Ultimately, you know, to, uh, you know, cause you to forget, all right, uh, uh, who you are and who your power is, man, and to cause you to follow, follow these other gods, follow the ways of these other nations, and uh, ultimately forsake Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says, uh, standardized, joined up. <laughs> okay, man. Esau wants you to join up with him. He wants you to side on his side, okay? You know? Ultimately, he wants you to receive his M-A-R-K, okay? He wants you to bow down to him. And he wants you to worship him as your God, which the majority of our people already do that, all right? It says, back in Ezekiel 35th chapter, going down to verse 3, it says, let's we'll start in verse 2 again. It says, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate, and I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. Okay, and when you go into that word perpetual, it means uh, a couple of the definitions or words are uh, everlasting, long lasting, forever and ever. The so-called white man is always going to have a hatred towards you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. And the only reason you don't see it on a high level amongst these average everyday Edomites, okay, is because of the laws and, and the vibration that is pushed by these wicked elites in society, all right? These these every average day, every average day Edomites don't want to voice or act upon the way they feel towards you Israelites because of the way they're going to be looked at in society, okay? They might lose their job, all right? Their wife might divorce them. Their kids might look at them a certain way, all right? They might be looked at as a racist, as hateful, you know, or, or, or various other things. Also, another thing, they don't want to lose the things that they have attained, uh, uh, you know, in this lifetime, okay? And, and, the, and, the, and the status that they have achieved, okay? You know, so... Ultimately, they're 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 keeping everything hidden or boiled up inside of them. All right. Well, all that is being boiled up inside of them is about to be unleashed on a very, very high level, man. OK, <laughs> you know, and uh, you're about to, you know, you Israelites are, are really about to see the horns of these devils, man. OK, you're really about to see the hatred that the so-called white man has for you, man. All right. Because when society collapses and all hell breaks loose and there's no threat of, you know, uh, when, uh, when everything's shut down, guess what? 
you know, when, when there's when there's nothing to lose, so to speak, and, and and Esau has Esau can go all out. Hey, he's really not only is he gonna voice his hatred to you, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but guess what? He's gonna act upon it, man. You best believe these uh these uh, uh white supremacist uh militia groups, okay, which are laying dormant on a certain level. Guess what? They're gonna get the okay from the higher ups to act upon their hatred towards you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. All right? Let's read on. Ezekiel 35 and 5 says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast hated, has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. This man loves blood, okay? And he thrives uh, 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 off the blood shed of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans because he knows you're the Israelites and he knows that you're the next in line for rulership and he knows that your rulership is going to be an everlasting rulership, man, okay? Now, I want to jump back to, uh, or jump back to, uh, or Salaki, or go to Deuteronomy 28 chapter because, you know, the main thing that our people, you know, are oblivious to or fail to realize or are ignorant to are the curses, okay? And, you know, our people are still trying to, 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 to seek and find rest in America as well as various parts of the earth. You know, but that's never going to happen. That's never going to be attained. You know, this imaginary dream that is dangling over the heads of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans is something that you can never uh, attain. You can never catch. All right. It's nothing but a rat race. That rat, rat is always, uh, you know, is running in that, that hamster wheel, you know, in, in order to, uh, you know, get catch and, and get the cheese well guess what the cheese was never set up there for you to get for you to catch <laughs> all right let's go to deuteronomy chapter 28 and let's go down to verse uh let's go down to verse 15 it says but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy power yahweh to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which i command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee all right, so all the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are under the curses, okay? No matter how poor you are, no matter how rich you are, you're still under the curses. You're still under the so-called white man, all right? You're still under, you know, strict orders, okay? And the higher you get up in society and the more money you make, hey, the stricter those orders, okay, uh, the stricter those orders come, all right? If these 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 uh, Israelites in Hollywood, OK, and that have, have sold out and, have, have, you know, taken the bag would, would really voice the truth and what they've done to achieve status, fame. All right. As well as various other things. They will come out and tell you these things, man, of what is required, what they had to do and how, you know, the inner circles of Hollywood and uh, the music industry are really ran. OK, but. They've sworn into secrecy and they've took an oath and they know if they came out and say these particular things, guess what? <laughs> you know, their life is at stake. OK, it says verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shalt thou be thy basket and thy store, thy store. All right. You know, even if you are able to set up a, a, a profitable business, uh, I guess what, man? You know, Esau has all different types of stipulations different laws, heavy taxes, okay, where, you know, even if you have your own business, your own company, you get damn near got to work your ass off just to even, just to be able to, uh, uh, to keep it up and attain it, all right, hey, there's no kicking your feet back up and, and putting your hands behind your head, kicking your feet back up and then pushing the recliner back over here in Babylon, man, all right, it says, curse shall be thy basket and thy store, Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, thy, thy, the increase of thy kind 
and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in. Hey, you're cursed when you're born, man. You're born into the curses. Okay? And you got our people that love celebrating their birthday, their curse day. All right? As soon as you're born into this life, you're born into captivity. You're born into oppression. You're coming into these chains where you're constantly afflicted. And the so-called white man seeks out to cause, uh, uh, to increase your afflictions of your body. He's constantly spraying the air. He's constantly putting uh, different uh, chemicals in the food. All right. Hey, man. Hey, I, I, if, if you ain't seen the movie, they clone Tyrone. Check that movie out, man. <laughs> yeah, that movie's heavy, man. Esau, it goes into how Esau is systematically doing things amongst the communities of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. The things that happened in the past concerning Jake, hey, it's still happening, man. Okay? It's just happening in a different way. Esau is using his witchcraft to make it seem like things are better, things are okay. All right? Things are not as bad as it seems. But it's the same thing, man. All right? It's the same pattern. This is the same serpent. All right? It says, verse 18, or Slocky, verse uh, 19, Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed. <laughs> so no matter how, how high you get in society, guess what? Whatever you put your hand to do, hey, it's cursed, and you're cursed. And there's going to be no, uh, 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 you know, everlasting success, okay, in this lifetime, so to speak. It says, and until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of thy wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. And we, you know, we've been put under these curses like I've, I've read because of, you know, how we've went off. You know, we, we constantly have in our, in our past life. You know, when you go into the history of the uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the Israelites, we constantly, you know, went whoring after these other nations and these these other nations' gods, okay? And then ultimately, you know, you have Most High Yahweh, you know, uh, uh, sent another nation, you know, to to jack us up, okay, and and put us in captivity, and then you know we turn back to the Most High Yahweh, and the Lord deliver us. And this would happen constantly, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Read the book of Judges, okay? You know, uh, we, 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 we constantly would, would turn back to these, these idols, man. We would turn back to following the ways of these other nations, man, okay? <laughs> you know, and then, you know, the Lord would jack us up, man. So, uh, you know, all you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are under the curse, and the only time the curses will be alleviated uh, from us is when we uh, enter into the kingdom. That's the only time that we will receive true rest, okay? Uh, let's go into, let's, let's jump down to verse 25. It said, The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and thou shalt be removed into all the kings of the earth. Uh, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai scattered us into all the four corners of the earth. And, and you know, the, the Israelites are scattered uh, in every part of the earth, okay? And no matter what part geographically you Israelites are, you're still under the curses, okay? So there's nowhere you can flee. There's nowhere you can go, okay? You know, <laughs> to, to, to hide or be alleviated from the curses of Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Let's jump down to verse uh, 36. It said, The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and, that, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword. And has that not happened? Are we not astonishment? Are we not looked down upon amongst all these nations? Hey, man, these other nations come over here, and they, as soon as they step off the plane, they look down upon you. All right. They get all types of grants. They get all types of business, et cetera. Hey, Ishmael, as soon as he steps off the plane, he's all, he, 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 he jumps off. He steps off the plane calling you niggas. <laughs> he comes, steps off the plane, shaking his head, head at you, uh, at you jakes. 
Say, look at these niggas, you know. So I already got me a business. I already got me a store, you know. These niggas been here all these years and ain't done shit. So they already, they already looking down upon you, man. You know, it says, uh, Salaki, I lost my spot. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 37. It says, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword, man. All right. And we've become a byword, a proverb, an astonishment all over the four corners of the earth. Okay. We are called any and everything besides who we truly are being Hebrew Israelites. All right. And even our own people, you know, continue to call themselves, all right, these proverbs and bywords, and they even think that these are nationalities now, okay? And ultimately, it's because they have drinking that wine. Uh, they, they've, ta they, they've, they've drinking that Babylon. <laughs> they've drinking the wine of Babylon, man. They've drinking the juice, okay? It says, verse 38, it says, uh, let me finish 37, Salaki. It says, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead, you, lead thee. So we're, you know, we're an astonishment amongst, you know, all these different particular nations, man. Okay? You know, and, uh, you know, we don't have uh, no type of power, so to speak, concerning a, a government, politically, an army. All right? The only power that you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans is the power, uh, uh, you know, in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says, verse 38, and thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and thou shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Now, let's go down to verse 30, 43. It says, the stranger that is within thee shall get up high above, Slaki. the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. All right. Hey, the so-called white man has got very high above you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, man. All right. And how has he done that? OK, well, he's done that through the process of slavery. OK, the process of conquering. All right. You know, he's had a whole lot of time and he's had a whole uh, uh, he's done a whole lot of oppression upon you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. And you ultimately were forced to build up his kingdom. All right. And establish things for him. OK, so he was able to get a nice little uh, 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 he, he was able to get a nice. Uh, a nice head start, so to speak. OK, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, you know, mainly I mean, I'm just talking about, you know, over here in America. OK, years and years and years of a, of a head start, you know, which, you know, even even, even if. Esau said to this day, OK, we're going to even the playing field out and we're going to give you Israelites this amount of land, this amount of money. OK, you know, we're going to try to make things right for what we did to you in times past concerning oppression, slavery, the, the, the robbery of your land, this, etc. OK, really, even in, in the event of that, there's still no even playing field. OK. Because he has gotten very high above you Israelites and you, there's just no catching up. You can't catch up to where this man is at. All right. Even if you get in your own land, your own establishment. These various things, a certain amount of income and money, guess what? You're still dependent on this devil. OK, you're still going to have to use his. Uh, uh, you're still going to have to use his stores, his banks, his items, you know, his chariots. OK, you're still going to have to go before this man. OK, so there is no even playing field and there never will be an even playing field. Man, this man has to go into slavery, man. As simple as that. OK, he has to be put in chains. All right. And we don't want no reparations, man. You got to go through captivity. You got to go through slavery. All right. Matter of fact, let's go to Revelation, uh, the 13th chapter real quick. And we'll jump right back. This is Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. All right. So this, this is what must happen. And there ain't no running. There ain't no tiptoeing around it, man. All right. And the sad part is a lot of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, y'all want this man to get a pass, man. 
Okay? That's why two-thirds of the nation of Israel, y'all got to go, man. You know what did Dr. Umar Johnson say? Hey, you know, a lot of these, these niggas is going to sleep for good. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28, chapter. Let's go down to verse uh, 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. And he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Okay? And uh, he's able to do these particular things concerning the video clip that you watch, you know, concerning, uh, you know, the, the, the systematically uh, keeping you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans oppressed, keeping you in the ghettos, the favelas, you know, keeping you in the situation that you're in because power has been given to him. Let's go to Micah, the second chapter. Let's go down to verse one, starting verse one. It says, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. OK, this devil is constantly. All right. Working out schemes, plans, agendas, strategies upon you, so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans to keep you oppressed, to keep you in the situation that you're in, to keep you drugged up. All right. To keep you keep you mentally and spiritually confused, to keep you uh, 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 on these streets, pushing his products. All right. Doing his products, keeping in you the, in these prison houses, these jails. All right. You know, and ultimately keeping you uh, uh, killing each other, man keeping you dead or in jail, all right? It says, verse, uh, it says, continue on verse two, it says, when the morning is like they practice because it is in the power of their hand. See, it's in the power of their hand to do these particular things, okay? The Most High Yahweh has put this this uh, this devil in the, in, the, in the power seat position. So he's able to do these things, man. He's been given power on the left-hand side, Okay? Verse two, and they covered fields and take them by violence. He took this land by violence, this land of America. All right. He took it by violence. He didn't ask. OK, he didn't plead. He didn't, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, come to a, a 50 50 agreement to obtain this land. He took it by violence, by the bloodshed of the so-called Native Americans. Man, it says and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house even a man in his heritage. And he's able to do this because he's been given power. All right. Well, really, he's been given power by Yahweh Shai, man, because that blessing was given to this man, uh, uh, you know, uh, by, by Isaac. OK. Verse three, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I, against this family, do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go hardly for this time is evil. OK. And, you know, ultimately, you know, these wicked elites are, basically going to collapse society. All right. And, you know, they're going to try to bring out of that a new world order. OK. You know, just like, you know, we like to go into this devil works in a, a problem reaction solution uh, uh, a method. OK. And out of that, the collapse of society, collapse of the dollar, you know, all hell breaking loose. He's going to try to bring out a new world order. All right with the uh, this electronic device being at the forefront of that, okay? But like the scripture says in Job, when he's about to fill his belly, you know, the Most High is going to cast him down while he's eating, roughly paraphrasing. So he's not going to achieve his New World Order goal. He's not going to achieve his agenda, okay? You know, but he's going to get very, very close, all right? Lord willing, that was Edifon to the next time. Shalom.